Hey everyone and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. We're your go-to for reliable information and resources when it comes to HIV testing. With us, you're getting 100% accurate results, over 4,500 labs across the U.S. It's private and confidential, and you get your results fast. And speaking of breakthroughs, there's some exciting news from the NIH. They're launching a clinical trial for not just one, but three potential HIV vaccines, all based on that mRNA technology. This trial could totally change how we approach HIV prevention. It's incredible. For sure. It's huge. When you think about how long we've been searching for an HIV vaccine, this could be a big turning point. Absolutely. So to really understand what this means, can we just break down how these mRNA vaccines actually work? We keep hearing about them with COVID-19, but what's the science behind them? It's like sending a message, a genetic message. Instead of using a weakened virus like traditional vaccines, mRNA vaccines deliver a bit of genetic code, like a blueprint, you know? It tells your cells to make a protein that mimics one found on HIV. Ah, so it's like giving our immune system a preview of what the virus looks like without the actual risk of getting infected. Exactly, like showing your immune system a wanted poster of the virus so it learns to recognize and attack the real thing if it ever encounters it. Makes sense. And one of the things that's been highlighted is how adaptable mRNA tech is, especially with HIV mutating so rapidly. You got it. HIV's constant mutations have been a major challenge with traditional vaccines. But with mRNA, if the virus changes, scientists can just adjust the code to match the new variant. Wow, so it's like having a vaccine that evolves along with the virus. Precisely. Incredible. So how is the NIH using this mRNA tech for HIV in this trial. So this trial, it's called the HVTN302 study. It's taking a triple threat approach. They're testing three different mRNA vaccine candidates at the same time. Each one targets specific proteins on HIV. Each one targets them in slightly different ways. I like it, a three-pronged attack. Can you tell us more about each of the candidates and what makes them different? Absolutely. The first one focuses on the Envave protein. That's the key that HIV uses to get into human cells. Ah, so it's targeting the virus's entry point. Exactly, blocking it at the door. I see, I see. What about the second candidate? The second candidate also goes after Envave, but presents it a bit differently. This aims to trigger an even stronger immune response. Think of it as a more detailed wanted poster, so the immune system gets a clearer picture. Okay, so it's upping the ante. And what about candidate number three? Now this one is interesting, it's like a Swiss army knife, going after HIV from multiple angles. Instead of just end of it, it targets several HIV proteins at the same time, aiming for a broader and more robust immune response. Ah, so it's casting a wider net, makes it tougher for the virus to slip through. That's pretty impressive. But what does all this mean for the people actually participating in the trial? What's it going to be like for them? The HVTN302 study, it's enrolling around 108 adults. They're healthy and HIV negative. Okay, so about 108 people in the study. Yeah, and they'll be randomly assigned to one of the three vaccine candidates. Or a placebo. Ah, so it's a bit of a lottery, which candidate they end up getting. But that's important, right? To make sure it's a fair test. Absolutely. That random assignment ensures that any difference we see in their immune responses, we can be sure it's because of the vaccines and nothing else. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So these participants, I imagine they'll be monitored pretty closely throughout the trial. Oh yeah, definitely. The trial will run for several months. During that time, the researchers are gonna track their immune responses very carefully, looking for signs that the vaccines are doing what they're supposed to do. What sort of signs are they looking for? One of the key things is the production of neutralizing antibodies. These are like uh, guided missiles, specifically designed to go after and destroy HIV particles before they can infect cells. Wow, that's amazing. So the more neutralizing antibodies, the better the vaccine is at actually preventing HIV. Exactly, it's all about prepping the immune system, you know, mm -hmm. so it can put up a strong, fast defense if it comes across the real virus. And while they're looking for those good signs, I imagine they're also making sure everything is safe for the participants. You got it. Safety is a top priority in any clinical trial. They'll track any reactions to the vaccines very carefully, looking for anything unusual, making sure everything is well tolerated. That's reassuring. Let's zoom out for a second. Think about the big picture. Even with all the progress we've made with treatment and prevention, HIV is still impacting lives around the world. So if these vaccines are safe and effective, what kind of impact could we see? It's hard to really overstate how big of a deal this could be. Imagine a world where we could really bring down the number of new HIV infections. Maybe even a future where HIV isn't a public health crisis anymore. That's the goal. That would be huge. 
Incredible. This isn't the first time we've tried to develop an HIV vaccine though, right? What's different about this um, mRNA approach? Yeah, it's been a long road with a lot of challenges. Those earlier attempts, they used more traditional methods. They haven't been as successful at giving lasting protection. HIV is really tough to beat. So what makes HIV so hard to target with a vaccine? It's how quickly it mutates. Like trying to hit a moving target, a target that keeps changing its shape. Traditional vaccines have trouble keeping up with those changes, which is why it's been so hard to get long-lasting immunity. Okay, so that's where the mRNA approach comes in. Because it can be adapted, right? If the virus changes, scientists can just update the code. Yep, that's the beauty of it. That's what makes it so exciting, not just for HIV, but for other infectious diseases too. Amazing. So what happens next? What are the next steps for this research? Well, they'll keep enrolling people and collecting data for about a year. If the early results look good, meaning the vaccines are safe and triggering a strong immune response, we can expect to see more trials. And what would those expanded trials look like? They'd likely include more people, a wider range of people. It's all about confirming that the vaccines work and are safe in different populations. So if it works, everyone can benefit. That's really encouraging news. It feels like we're close to a real breakthrough. I'm sure our listeners want to stay updated on the trial. Where can they find more information? The NIH website has a ton of information, details about the study, how it's going, and any new findings they have. I definitely encourage everyone to check it out. Awesome. We'll be sure to include a link to that website in the show notes. And of course, we'll keep you updated on any big developments. It's definitely an exciting time. But even as we're looking to this future with a potential vaccine, we can't forget about the tools we already have to stop HIV from spreading. Exactly. Regular testing, getting diagnosed early, and effective treatment, they can all make a huge difference. And that's something we're really passionate about here at the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. Absolutely. We're here to provide the info and resources you need to get tested, quick, affordable, and confidential. Knowing your status is the first step to taking charge of your sexual health. This mRNA research, it's a powerful reminder. The scientific community is working hard toward the future without HIV. It gives a lot of hope to millions of people. As we wait for the results, let's remember we all have a part to play in ending the epidemic. We can learn about HIV, practice safe sex, and encourage others to get tested. Every action, even the smallest one, gets us closer to that goal. This has been really eye-opening. I'm sure our listeners have a lot to think about. Is there a final thought we could leave them with? It really makes you think. With how well mRNA vaccines have worked against COVID-19, what other infectious diseases could we use them for? Could this be the start of a whole new era in vaccine development? That's a powerful thought. The potential is huge, not just for HIV, but for so many diseases. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. We've learned a lot about mRNA HIV vaccines, and we'll definitely keep following this story. Don't forget, here at the HIV RNA Test Guide, we're all about giving you the info you need to stay healthy. Head to HIVRNATest.com for all your testing needs. We've got you covered. We offer quick, affordable, and confidential testing at over 4,500 labs across the country. Get your results in just 24 to 48 hours. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed, and stay curious.